Okay, great. <laughs> Super. All right, let's see. Um, next slide. Mm -mm. Why don't I move my slides? Help, help. There we are. Okay. So this workshop is done in partnership with Brussels Environment, uh, which uh, is um, having a, an initiative called Zero Waste. So you can go to their site and there's many other people presenting various things on how to become waste free. Okay, don't forget guys to keep your mics muted while I talk so we don't have the background noise. All right, everyone. So again, for those of you that are new, uh, my name is Maddie and I am the founding manager at The World is Home nonprofit organization. I'm also the podcast co-host at Greenbusters Podcast. If you would like to tune in, it's a part of our nonprofit organization. So the world is home in a, just a nutshell. It's an international nonprofit organization fighting the growing production of single-use plastics. And our background, as I explained in the last workshop, was a family world tour, which made us realize that uh, the world was covered in plastic, something that was um, very, very, very shocking. So I showed these images to you the last time, just for those of you that are new. Uh, this is maybe what it should have looked like, but this is the reality of how it looked. And I explained a little bit on the last, um, do I cover this, this covers, right? It doesn't look so good. Let's make, maybe make this one is better. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, perfect. So anyways, we were talking a little bit about plastics last time and I tried to explain in as many details as I could about the problematic um, material that plastic is, uh, being an eternal material, not disappearing in any way, although very often we put dates on it, those dates are not accurate, mostly because plastic requires uh, oxygen, UV, etc. to break up. And when we talk about breaking up, we talk about breaking up into smaller pieces called micro and nanoplastics, eventually, um, you know, being bred by, uh, by, by us or eaten. We also have the synthetic clothing, uh, which is also part of the whole um, um, plastic problem. Uh, so nylon, acrylic, polyester, and so on. They shed microfibers, which pass uh, the water filters or a part of them pass the water filters and enter into the sea, to the sewage. Plastic also contains a lot of toxic additives, which we know very little about. And because plastic has large heavy molecules that are unstable. We use these additives to stabilize them. Uh, and it is not uh, a stable material. So eventually they will leach out onto our food or into our nature. Plastic is therefore not a circular solution. It's a, a misleading concept that plastic can be recycled because it needs a virgin plastic. Most of, uh, almost, almost all of it, only a fraction is recycled. And this also uh, contrib contributes to the big pollution because we, we really have to rid of it somehow. So we start to burn it. But even when we burn it, I explained that last time, we have something we call toxic ash or the end waste. Uh, and that's about 30% of the plastic burned, depending on which technology. Plastic production is also increasing. So despite the fact that we are very aware, <laughs> I would say we feel like we are very aware, uh, actually, plastic is increasing. So in this presentation, I will talk to you about plastic greenwashing and teach you a little bit more about that. And then we'll go through some suggested solutions. I sent in the email um, a link to a drive where I put up some kind of a sheet for you guys. And that's more or less what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive in. What is greenwashing? Okay, so the greenwashing term is an ecological misinformation. Uh, it's deceiving the consumers into believing that a company's products are environmentally friendly. So these are just a couple of things, but as you see, it's very, very green uh, and it has big green statements on it. I'm going to show you a few products that I have here as well when I finish uh, the slides. And I will start with this short video. Uh, 
started the story is just in the ladies now. The road just started and it pushes. <laughs> Swimming and living in litter is for women. So that's the okay, that was one, and we're going to talk about what we just saw here in a moment. Let me show you the second one. Some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. Some people don't. Stop pollution. People can stop it. Okay. So Let's talk about what has happened in these two videos here. So I'm not sure if you are all familiar with this, but here is a perfectly, um, you can admit as well because I don't have to do that. Uh, here is a perfect example of shifting responsibility. So shifting the responsibility away from producers and on to people, us, the consumers. And as you can see, these are very old videos. And this shift has been going on since the 50s. So to make a very long story very short, when in the United States of America, people realized that plastic recycling was a futile trial, and it would never work. Um, companies like Coca-Cola, um, like Pitt Morris, um, you know, um, several, several large corporations, both within the plastic and in chemical industry, and then later packaging industries, of course, um, joined forces to be able to uh, shift the responsibility away from them and onto us, the consumers. Um, so excuse me, it's over there. Um, and this shift has been, you know, radical because suddenly they no longer needed to explain why there was a problem. It wasn't on their shoulders. It was us, the animals who threw things in the waste, uh, in, outside the, way, the bins, threw it on the beach and so on. And this shift has been going, going on until today. Uh, laws which were trying to forbid plastic recycling were lobbied away with very, very heavy money. So this lobbying has been going on for a long time as well. Um, and of course, supporting nonprofit organizations that pick up and uh, promote recycling. So what would be wrong with picking up? I obviously pick up myself, our children pick up, all our friends pick up, and that the world is home, we do pick up. But we do not promote pick up just because we really want to make a differentiation. It is not because we put it in the right bin that the plastic problem will be solved because we do not know what happens to the bin. And we talked a little bit about that last time. There are large uh, alliances like the Expra um, or like the Alliance to End the Plastic Waves. They have huge funds. The Alliance to End Plastic Waves is fighting against the plastic pollution. They have 1.5 billion euro to do that with. Uh, and of course, for that money, you can do a lot. Uh, however, the uh, people who are aligned here are the biggest producers of plastics and chemicals that go into the plastics in the world. So they are investing around 280 billion euros in new facilities to continue and grow production of plastic. So as you can see, this type of greenwashing is a very sophisticated and it's very, very um, large and it's a huge financial um, scale. So it's very difficult for us, the little consumers, 
to, to pile through that. Also, they hire geniuses in marketing. And let's talk a little bit about that. Um, while, uh, just to say that we have Keep America Beautiful, that also exists in most um, countries in the world. So there is an equivalent of Keep America Beautiful in Belgium, in Holland, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you'll find those kind of organizations. And they, of course, uh, continue talking about recycling, and they continue to talk about um, pickups. They also oppose deposit and return systems, uh, which always should be alarming for us because when I was a child, it was normal to bring back the bottle and get it washed and fill filled. But that's of course an extra cost to the companies. It is cheaper for them and nothing will ever beat the price of the plastics, which is a byproduct of the fossil fuels as we know uh, in 99% of the cases. So this is the cheapest material that they can get and they don't care what happens after. So shifting, um, Recycling symbol, I just wanted to mention that as well. The recycling symbol was invented by the plastic industry. And as I told you the last time, uh, symbol number seven means other. So there are thousands of different uh, plastics, which are uh, polymer, long polymer chains, uh, which contain a variety, a cocktail of additives, depending on uh, what it is uh, that they want to obtain. Anyways, so let's see. Opposing uh, laws to forbid plastic recycling. That's what most of these companies do as well. Here is a very good uh, example of how Coca-Cola is acting. As you've probably seen this across Brussels, this, this large uh, um, board saying that together we can recycle. Please help us to recycle. And when we talk about um, cans, we also have to be aware of the fact that inside the metal cans, there is very often a layer of plastic. So many people don't know that. Inside the cans is a layer of plastic. Um, it's called epoxy. And it's usually to protect uh, the, the aluminum from corrosion uh, when you have fizzy drinks like Coca-Cola, especially Coca-Cola. Uh, here's another statement, plastic contributes to the climate protection, Plastic Europe 2020. Helping families get fit. Great Free from Plastics is an organization that unites many nonprofit organizations and individuals um, to fight against the growing plastic. And every year they make a brand, uh, an audit, a brand audit, and with over 5,000 brands. And, and this, this year's uh, brand audit, which was done in 2020, uh, revealed as always that Coca-Cola is the world's most biggest polluter, followed by PepsiCo and Nestle, Unilever, Mondelez International, Mars, Procter & Gamble, Philip Morris, Colgate Palmolive, and Perfetti Vanilla. Those are perfectly, by the way, they are the guys that make the chupa chops, lollipops, and the mentos, and things like that. Um, Coca Cola uh, um, were recorded in 51 countries. And, um, and the, va the vastness of that, it, they were twice as big, or actually, the amount that they collected that belonged to Coca Cola of plastic waste uh, was as much as Nestle and PepsiCo combined. And the worrying thing here is that this audit compared to 2019's audit is uh, showing that Coca-Cola's uh, waste is bigger than the previous year. So again, it's a growth. It's not a, it's not, we are aware, we're talking about it, green deal, green economy, let's slow down. No, the reality speaks differently. Here is, for example, a beautiful, a beautiful image of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Life. This brand, uh, as you can see, has a fantastic name, but it's also a Coca-Cola brand. And so is this. As you can see, those are great slogans. Honest, organic, innocent, green, life for people who are aware and environmental. So that would be us. So in 2019, Coca-Cola revealed for the first time ever that their packaging footprint was about 3 million tons of plastic packaging a year. And when the journalists calculated that, it turned out to be more than 200,000 bottles every minute. So 108 billion bottles a year. 108 billion bottles a year. It represents more than one-fifth of the world's entire world pet bottle output, which is about 500 billion pounds a year in 2019. So I would guess very strongly that by now it has increased as do the profits uh, of Coca-Cola. So why do they increase? The answer is very simple. We buy 
there is a demand and there is a supply. Okay, so we are the ones that buy it. Um, and we don't, we shouldn't shift the responsibility onto us for the plastic waste, but we could start thinking about what we are buying and why we are buying it and how we are buying it. So here is a, an, a plastic industry insider who wrote in the speech in 1974, there is a serious doubt that recycling plastic can ever be made viable on an economical basis. A basis. Selling recycling means selling plastic because recycling high quality needs new virgin plastic. And that is what I was telling you before. Um, let's see. Companies commit to fake solutions. So these are the four parts that companies usually commit to. They talk about unproven at scale technologies, like for example, chemical recycling. Chemical recycling is in a laboratory state, yet we are investing here in Europe billions or at least hundreds of millions into developing that. And all that maintaining the status quo of us continuing to throw away and waste. So it's not even only about plastics. It's about the way that we uh, live. It's about the way we do not live in a circular economy because a circular economy is where everything, every resource is taken care of and is reused as much as possible. So uh, making a technology so that we can continue throwing away uh, is, 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 is just the wrong, the, wrong, the wrong way. And you know, very often we have no clue about the environmental impact that these new solutions will have. Obviously, when we talk about chemical recycling, we need to look into chemicals, which is something we will do at the next workshop. The third party collect and dispose, of course, uh, this is the case almost everywhere in the world. Uh, it is not uh, the city who is responsible about, of, of um, recycling. It is the, the city's job ends when we have put things in the bin and then that's it. Where it goes from there, we cannot control. There is no transparency on that. And we would really love to see that. We would love to see that because when we are calling here at the World is Home um, to recycling facilities, we do not get answers. So they're not clear, they're not transparent, and they're not obliged to tell us um, they can export what they account as recycled into other countries. So a lot of Belgian plastic waste goes for recycling to France, for example, or Turkey, Poland. So <clears throat> it's um, also a false narrative when pl public uh, claims uh, are made or implied by the company messaging around the project that is problematic. So for example, beach up are a solution, beach cleanups are a solution. And then announced then nothing. This is another thing. Coca-Cola announced already in 1981 that it was going to reduce uh, the plastic bottles and include uh, a lot of uh, recycled plastics into their bottle production. And this has not been a case for decades. Okay, so right now uh, they're talking about including 6% of recycled plastics into their bottles. Again, you have to think about the scale here. We're talking about 6% of their bottles would contain a fraction of recycled plastics. That, that does not make sense in no matter which angle you look at this. Okay, it just doesn't make sense. Um, right, so you saw this slide last time as well. Picking up plastics is like cleaning up the floor while the bathtub is overflowing. And for us, the first logical step would be to close the tap. 380 million, 380 million tons of plastic produced every year, or, and that is an increasing number, increases by 4% a year. More than half of the plastic now on earth has been created since 2002. And in our own life, me and my husband, Serve, we are divers. And I must tell you that since the beginnings of my dives, um, I feel that the ocean has changed tremendously in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, everywhere we dive, we see that big difference. It's, it, it matters. It makes a lot of, um, it makes, you know, it's very visual. There is so much plastics around. Uh, it's as much plastic as there are fish sometimes in certain places, depending on the currents. So if we continue this pace and we don't change something, uh, plastic output will, and the plastic pollution is about to double by 2030. So dear corporations and our full solutions, so this is the Break Free from Plastic announcement and, uh, and they were making a campaign at the end of the month of June. You can check that on the internet to hashtag and to ask, ask corporations to stop with the, with the fake solutions. So what can we do? <laughs> I think maybe we can stop here for a second and uh, you can maybe ask your questions. Let's 
let me stop the share. Okay, guys, if there is anyone that has a question at this point, please ask me now. You can write the chat or you can put your mic on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, only that uh, it's incredible because we are thinking that there are lots of things uh, about reducing plastic and what you are, the cipher says that it's growing, the production is growing, so I'm quite astonished. It's yeah. It's growing a lot. Uh, it's not growing a little bit. Also, you have oh. to realize something, um, fossil fuel industry uh, sees a very important revenue stream from the plastics because of the situation of fossil fuels in general, this becomes one of their most important revenue streams. Mm. And we're talking about from 20, maybe 25% of their profit. That is huge. They are not gonna give that up. So, um, you know, we have to remember this when we, we think about plastics. We always have to remember this because when we think that it's just one more straw or it's just one more bag or it's just, I just love this cheese so much, I need to have it in my emballage. We really have to think it's not just one cheese, it's eight billion of us <laughs> having something that is wrapped in plastics, right? But Maybe you have it's also yeah. Mm -hmm. Because consumers are starting to reduce the plastics, but the big industry continue producing it because, okay. Yes. I don't know if you have noticed that, for example, products that we used to buy, I think we mentioned that last time as well, products that we used to buy uh, in glass or in aluminium have changed to plastic. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. lot of studies which study the um, life cycle analysis, which is really the wrong way to go because life cycle analysis of plastic is a very, very complex uh, analy analysis, uh, which is absurd. It, it makes no sense actually in many, many ways. Uh, it's better to just make precise analysis. But in this life cycle analysis, very often uh, um, you will see uh, that there is a CO2 uh, question mixed into all of this and they talk about reducing the weight of the cars and the CO2 emission but plastic in nature emits CO2 as well and plastic in manufacturing process emits CO2 and in transporting of the plastic nurdles we emit CO2 so okay. the CO2 of the plastic and plastics uh, industry does not have to declare that so it's very hard to get the right numbers you know uh, what we really have to think about is that plastic is eternal and it's laying around. And if we buy it and we take it, we contribute to it. That's all. We have to get that into the, the head when we're thinking about plastic. Something even if we are not a company, but we are only consumers. And okay. Yeah, yeah, to protect ourselves. We'll get to the solution in a second. Anybody else that wants to ask me a question about um, the, 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 the recycling, the lobbying, the greenwashing itself? Uh, hi, it's Juana. Hi, Juana. Uh, I don't hear you. Hello, hello. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I think she, yeah. she, she, she ah, okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Hi. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Joanna. Hi, hi. Oh, we, we've been in touch. I uh, entered late because uh, I had a work meeting. So my question for you is very simple. Are you? I just a webinar, in fact. Okay, I didn't hear your question. Uh, <coughs> NL, I'll, I'll mute you. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, what was your question? Can you please repeat? I wanted just to ask you, are you optimistic about this? Because we are not so many refusing to use plastic. Because this is the only way. We cannot fight, we cannot move mountains, we cannot fight with big companies, with Coca-Cola. Okay. And it's a very good question. It's a very, very good question. I think that... Um, I think I will be very political when I reply this because I don't believe that we we do anything good if we're not optimistic. So obviously, if I work uh, 10 hours a day uh, for free for the last two years, it's because I'm optimistic that we are going to achieve something. And, you know, I think that this 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 metaphor about ripples, about little ripples, it's, it's a good one because around me, around me, not only the volunteers, family members, friends, people are changing, people are realizing. So if I tell you this and you check it and you verify it and you tell your friends and so on, these ripples can make tsunamis. And I'm really hoping that they will be worth it. So I'm going to move on to the second part. Oh, sorry. Yes, why another? don't we use more recycled plastics? 
Okay, again, as I explained, when we talk about recycled plastics, we are supporting the plastic industry. To have one product of recycled plastics, you need at least 70% of virgin plastics. There are some very, very, very rare experimental uh, factories who are able to achieve a higher grade of plastic uh, without adding so much virgin plastics, but that is very exceptional. It's done on a fraction of product and it becomes a very expensive. You always have to understand that buying new is buying cheapest. Plastic is the cheapest material out there. Nothing, nothing beats it. Then comes nothing, and then and then some more plastic. You know, I mean, just this is the cheapest material you can get. It's it's good. It keeps the goods not spoiled. We can have stuff in our fridge for three months and they don't die. You know, so all that stuff. Uh, it's just you know, it's just uh, uh, not the right way. You know, uh, we have many other ways that we can uh, package or we don't have to package in many ways. That is an economical shift, which would be a truly circular shift. And there are companies here in Belgium, in France, across the world that work very hard and develop amazing systems and, and products which are completely packaged, packaging free, using reusing the same resources, whether it's a jar, it's a glass jar, you know, there's a whole economy that can be developed uh, by people who uh, will mend, who will repair, who will clean, who will deliver, uh, you know, we have partners in the world is home who pick up the diapers uh, that are reusable. They wash them and they bring back the diapers uh, to the families. Uh, just uh, you know, th th these kind of systems have a place in a future economy, and I really believe that's the that's the way to go. So let's talk a little bit more about. Is there more questions? So it's again a question of money. Whatever the effect of the money. Yes, it's a question of money. And we, we have to do that. When we make an investigation, and this was a, an advice given to me by a high up official who said to me, follow the money. And that's it. We have to be, uh, we have to be realistic. We can't be so naive, you know? All right, let me continue with, um, with the, 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 the rest of the slides. And then we, okie dokie. Uh, let me find the presentation again. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so <clears throat> what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? You had a little bit of homework. I don't know if you managed to uh, do the do the survey here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have uh, the replies? Uh, in the chat. Yeah. Right, Stephanie. Do you have the replies? What's the biggest problem, uh, plastic, in your life, or the one that you're noticing the most? Okay. Nobody took the poll, <laughs> but for those of you that answered the same poll, I put the poll up um, on. Um, on uh, with, uh, whip forms, I, I had about 15 answers there. Uh, clear, a clear dominant was uh, the packaging for food. So this is but also maybe, Maddie, maybe people can answer now and we see it yeah, live. Please go ahead. If you yes. if you go ahead and yes, um, packaging for food, 10%. Yeah, then I don't know how to answer. I am not very technical, guys. So, I mean, I am actually technical, but I don't know Zoom so well. <laughs> we use something else. So if you manage to click, click, then you can show me a little bit what. I, I really do believe that plastic packaging for food and yeah, plastic trays from food are by far the, the, the biggest one. That's that's what the results were in the VISCOM as well. So um, yeah, we can clearly say that, you know, most of us have a problem with, um, Food, food packaging. Let's see if I can move this away from my screen. Do you think you can close this, uh, Stephanie? Thank you so much. But I don't know how to remove it from my main screen. <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So solutions. All right. You know that this is how we talk about <laughs> making solutions that the world is home, noticing, learning, and acting. We talked about water, which is one of the biggest and most voluminous plastic in our bins, for those of you that still haven't changed uh, to filters, which I very much recommend. Um, or drinking tap water, which is very tested and, and, and safe to drink all over Europe. Um, what can we do? I'm sorry, can you stop sharing that, please? Yes, it's me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, I still see it. I stopped. Okay, Stephanie. <laughs> Technical help, please. I can't. I can't remove this. I don't know why. Remove what? The the oh, poll. Yes. 
Uh, okay. Let me... All right. It disappeared. Like Thank you so much. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you so much. So I sent you this um, this sheet in your in the first mail that I sent yesterday, uh, and the sheet is in the drive. You can you're welcome to to download that. And this is a little bit about uh, the plastics again, which we are talking we were talking about yesterday. Uh, sorry, the previous uh, episode, and uh, we are also mentioning the fact that there is eight thousand five hundred million tons of plastics out there. This is such an unfathomable amount of plastics that you know it's really hard for us to imagine. But um, I usually reduce this to another metaphor. Uh, if you go to your park, any local park uh, around you, you will most likely, if you look carefully uh, under your feet, you will find a lot of plastic covering the earth everywhere you go. And think about that and the whole planet. This is how the whole planet looks like and our oceans, of course. So the amount of plastic that is out there is very, is very overwhelming. What we have to do is paying attention to plastic materials in our own lives. So what do we bring in and which ones of these materials can we um, you know, uh, avoid to bring in? Um, for example, here are some questions I normally ask myself. So what is this my item made of? And as innocent as this question might seem, Vicky and I have been analyzing many, 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 many companies who have tried to promote products and services, but especially products uh, which were so-called green. And when we looked into things, every single time there was elements of plastics, almost, I would say, what, Vicky, 90%? Nine out of eight, maybe eight out of ten. Yeah. Eight out of ten uh, companies that are talking to us and, and explaining their their products to us um, have some form of plastics. Usually, they say it's biodegradable that you can throw it in your your compost, um, and that you know it's gonna go away somehow. But it's plastics, and it's bioplastics or plastics. It's plastics. It doesn't go away. Um, what plastics do I touch every day? So is there something that I'm touching with my mouth or is my child touching plastics with his or her mouth? Um, do I wear something that is organic or is it a plastic? Is it polyester? Is it, you know, um, um, is it made of polymers? Who handles my waste and where does it go? Of course, nobody has the time to investigate that, but really we have to try and we have to ask ourselves these questions. And do I know where this item comes from? So uh, who actually, wh where does it, does it come from? Who, who, is, who made it and how? And very often when we looked into it is we would know that buying goods are, is quite cheap when we think about it. We're like, wait a minute, how could I pay one euro for this? Like, what, why did I just pay three euros for this t-shirt? How could these people make money? That's just not possible. And it's not, and it's not that price is much bigger, but it's a, either an environmental or a, or a human price. You know, people are hiring children, slaves, and so on in producing various goods. So this is something that we always have to ask ourselves. And let's see, I'm going to quit here because uh, I'm going to go through these things with you. I have brought some, some things to the table here I'm going to show you, um, but and I have written the questions down here. So we're going to go through some of this. But as I said, this is in your drive, so you will be able to uh, look into that and we'll talk about it just now um, that's it for the next workshop uh, we are going to do that in September and I'll send you the date and we're going to talk about um, the chemical side the chemical industry which is a part of the plastic industry and we're going to talk a little bit about hygiene cleaning maintenance products and so on and so on and stay tuned also for our Plastic Free July, July campaign. We'll be, uh, you know, giving some good promotions and things and sharing a lot of info from some really amazing uh, companies. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, join our group to learn a little bit more. Uh, we are just growing this group. So you're very welcome to share your own do-it-yourself tips uh, and, and, uh, and, and ask around because there are many talented people much better in the kitchen than myself that will share good recipes. And we'll talk about that just when I finish the slides. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, stop presenting. All right, so do you guys see me well? Let's talk a little bit about these solutions. So I'm going to share with you some really uh, basic stuff that I did at first. And I think it's important to start with the point number one, which for me was relevant. 
set your mind is uh, something, you know, you'll say it's obvious, but to set your mind uh, uh, in, I will be plastic free. I understand this problem. I am aware of it. I have understood it. I have made my research. I know it's huge. And I will set my mind to not having plastics in my life. I'm doing my absolute best not to have plastics in my life. Um, for example, uh, I told you this example last time, I think, when I was going to the shop and kept forgetting my bags, I always bought a new bag, reusable, but, but still made of plastic, you know, these big bags. By the way, these bags for big, big, large companies are made uh, by very, very poor people in the Vietnam. And we have filmed a lot of those productions. They are uh, working under horrible conditions to make these huge bags. I will maybe share that with you uh, sometime soon on my YouTube channel. Um, when, when I went back for these bags for the first time, I never forgot them again. And there's of course, you know, cardboard boxes or things like that that we can use in the shop. And I'm sure that everybody that listens to me today is already like, hello, of course. But it's sometimes worth, you know, that trigger in your head that goes like, if I don't have it, I don't do it. You know, I'm, I just don't buy it. I just go back and get my bags. Same thing will go for a lot of other areas. Let's say you have a habit of uh, picking up a coffee on the way to your work. I used to have that. And I will get the coffee with a paper cup, which of course is lined with plastic inside. And then it has a plastic uh, lid because as I was walking on the street, you know, I had to have a lid on it. Well, that's a habit I just removed. Uh, and I have a cup, which I normally use. I'm not normally sipping on the drinks in this cup at home as well. It's a metallic one. And I like it and it's thermos and it keeps my coffee hot for a while. And so when I go out and I want a coffee out, I will ask normally to get this cup filled. However, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, one like that and it has a lid. Um, however, if I forget the cup and I feel like a coffee, here is the mindset. Um, I don't take a coffee or I take two minutes. I sit down and I drink my coffee in a cafe or in the bar. So in France, we can do that at the, at the bar and it's cheaper. So I just set my mind to, I'm not going to take it. So um, we'll get to the goodies in a moment, but um, it's another example of that. So trying to replace my habits. So if my habit was, I go from home towards my office, I always grab my coffee. My habit has changed. I do my coffee at home and I walk towards the office with my own coffee. Um, this is just one very tangible example of how I changed it, but we can get rid of the old habits and get into new habits. And the best way of doing a new habit is to making it fun. I'll give you another example. When we shop for food today, we do not shop for food as we used to. So this is the part of this kitchen workshop. It's really uh, shopping for food today for us is going to the market once a week and buying just enough, just enough. We do not buy 16 packs stuff that we are going to throw half of them uh, because they were on sale and they were all, you know, stuck together with a, with a tape and uh, you had to buy so many of them. We buy just enough of the stuff that we need. We do not buy any yogurts in plastic packaging. We don't buy food in plastic packaging at all, like nothing. So it's, we'll go to the market, we go to the farm, or we go into town to the Marché des Tanneurs, where we will buy loose weight, we'll bring our own bags, even the paper bags, again, paper bags reusal is very important as well. Um, and we, 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 we simply fill them and that's it. But making this habit into something fun is a little bit of a exquisition for us because we live a little bit outside the town. So we will go and have our favorite pizza, uh, or at least during the Corona. We, <laughs> before the Corona, we, had, we always stopped at this restaurant and we always had food there first and we loved it. So it was a nice going out with the kids. And just next door, there is a chocolate shop uh, which sells loose weight chocolate. And because, you know, in Sweden, we have a tradition that uh, candy is eaten once a week on Saturday, it's called Lodas Goodies. We stop at the, you know, at the, at the chocolate shop and the kids can select some pralines and again, lose weight and they're very happy. Uh, otherwise, we ask the kids to buy lose weight candy in a lose weight candy shop, which is just next to us. And they also bring their own bag. And if they don't, they use the paper bag that is in the shop. But that again, lose weight. We don't buy this plastic horrible emballage anymore. Um, so that's a fun way of doing it. So, you know, creating a new habit, and this is what I try to say in a positive way, that you can make a lot of, like, changes 
into something fun. They don't have to be something painful, like, oh, you know, I want my chips. No, they don't have to be like that. They can, they can change, you can, you can change it. Okay, so I get to the goodies. Like uh, one of the main things for me was like, what am I gonna do with my chips now? All chips are packaged in multi-layer plastics, which contain both plastic, aluminum, and so on and so on. And those are just the worst, the worst, the worst. Um, so I still feel like chips sometimes, you know, I'm a little bit of a glow mom. So, uh, so I, I, I have to go and discover some other goodies. For example, if I'm really like, I really have to have my little chips, I'll make them. And believe me, in our house, it's my husband who cooks. I am really not worth a lot in the kitchen. Everybody knows that. Um, but I, 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 I can make chips, you know, I make chips. We have a frying machine. My husband got one when we got here to Belgium. It's a real Belgian frying machine and we make, we shave the potato with like a cheese shaver, grater, or whatever you call it, shaver, and um, we fry them. And those are chips. You can put them in the oven as well. I have learned several things, you know. So, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, so yeah, so so new habits, making it fun, and discovering new things. So instead of my typical chips, I'll find something else, which is loose weight, which I will also like. Like there is a little shop around the corner which sells loose weight cookies. And so instead of the usual cookies, the, the usual that I've always bought for my kids in the shop, um, we buy these loose weight cookies now. But before we got there, my kids were like, I want my, uh, I don't remember, what you, it was not Oreo, the Lou, Lou, the Pet, Petit Prince uh, cookies. Those were the, the favorite cookies of my children. And they're like, I don't want any other cookie. I want that cookie. So either I had to bake, which I don't always have the time for, that they're very happy with. Um, or we have to find something that I can also buy when we're on a walk or we're having a goûter in the park, which is loose weight. So I will just get them a little cookie. It's not more expensive. In the end, when we made the calculations with my husband, it's not more expensive. We don't buy so much of it. We do make a lot of homemade stuff today. And when we are out and about, we have found our new goodies, our new favorites. Um, here's the thing, when, when I used to smoke, because yes, I was a smoker, terrible. Uh, filters are, by the way, plastic, big plastic polluters. Um, I used to drink water when I when I stopped uh, smoking. I used to uh, drink water instead. So I replaced that habit with with drinking water, you know, instead of eating, for example. Yeah. So it's really about that. Like we are going from one habit, create another habit, which is not going to be so bad, or it's maybe even better, right? Um, another example um, that I was was bringing up was to learn to do things yourself. And we're not all super handy. I'm sure all of you guys are really handy, but like, I'm not very handy. I uh, like to make parties with my, my kids so I can, you know, make a cake or something, but like, I don't cook and I don't know how to mend and I, I'm really not that good at it, but I can learn. So here is where I invite you really to come and join the group, which is at facebook.com slash groups slash the world is home, because last time I forgot the name, the word groups. Um, and there we have a few girls that actually know how to do a lot of things. And let me show you something that I replaced. <clears throat> Here's an example of um, some items that I brought out. I really wanted to show you stuff that I thought was impossible, just impossible. First, one of the things that we really like to do are, they're just natural shelves, right? But of course, you know that inside this cardboard box is a plastic bag. And know that because I feel very guilty every, every time I buy this. So then I put it on looking at this and as you see there is a plastic wrapping around this thing. So what do you do? I asked someone um, and then she showed me she introduced me to this product <laughs> which has just been a blast because you actually make your nachos yourself without it's super easy and there is a solution for every single problem. Everything that I have touched on, I mean, then there are things that are not perfect, of course. For example, when I go to the beer shop and I wanna buy pasta, they're all packaged in glass, so I don't take them. I do, I use this ugly brand. It's not very good and Vicky is against this because there are some problems with the OMG. Let's not get into that because we're focusing on plastic here. It does, however, have a plastic window here. They promised, again, they promised two years ago that all of that will be removed, but it's still here. Um, here is another example, a little bit about greenwashing, a little bit about solutions. This is plastic and this is paper with plastic on the inside. And here is a huge uh, 
publicity saying that there's 34% lower impact for the CO2. 35%. I am thinking that what they wanted to say is that because there is parts of this packaging has become paper that they're doing good, but this is no good. This is they not a good thing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. If the voice is going away, I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, maybe I covered the mic with this. Yeah, yeah sorry, no, I covered it. No, it looks better. <laughs> it was just at some point, maybe with the microphone. Maybe the internet is coming and going a little bit here. Um, so this is another thing that, you know, fixing things by yourself. So here are things that I have learned. I have learned how to make my own BWAPs, 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 BWAPs. I showed this to you last time. This is not actually my own. This is um, Simonette de la Bicyclette, a Belgian, amazing, amazing company. Uh, these girls, they do everything in Belgium. They source all the materials 100%. Um, cotton <clears throat> no mixing with polyester and they and hire employ you know handicapped people they're really wonderful people but i can do this myself i have learned that and for that i only use some um, bwax uh, um, um, petals like uh, just a, or you can grate your bwax and then i, I bought this one which is uh, it's gonna last forever and ever um it's um it's a resin la, um, to mix so that it sticks better to the to the to the cotton. I can I can share the recipe if you guys are interested. It's a little bit messy. So for me as a practical mom, I I, I also buy because I use these a lot for everything. So I also buy them, but I am able to do them. And here is the mending part. When they are starting to like flake and the bee wax is already gone from the cotton, I don't throw it. I just put it in my oven, remelt another uh, batch, and then I cover them again in wax which I think is the whole idea of the circular economy. We don't throw, we get this habit of mending things. And I used to be the girl that this is a little bit chipped, I throw it. You know, this is a little bit washed out, I throw it. I don't do that anymore. I've learned how to dry my own fruits, for example, um, uh, without this the humifier machine that costs 200 euros. You know, I actually learned it from a, from a girl that does zero waste uh, cooking, uh, who put, taught me to put it outside and just cover it with glass and then let it dry out in the sun naturally. So you can have berries or let's say you have slices of uh, oranges or slices of um, kiwi. You can dry it, dehydrate these fruits yourself and then give them to your kids for school or have them for lunch yourself or just you know have them as snacks. It's fun to discover how you can do things. It's not all just bad, you know? Um, I also learned how to make kombucha, which is uh, based on yeast. It's some sort of a tea based on yeast, and you can flavor it in many, many ways. Again, I can also share the recipe that I found. There are people who share them with me, um, if you would like to, at the end. Um, and then kombucha replaces all soft drinks or all fizzy drinks because it's naturally fizzy. So it's really cool because the kids just love it. They just love it because they know that it comes from a yeast. They know it's a living thing. <laughs> it's a whole it's a whole process right now. And I'm very into it. I, I actually discovered it through the Zero Waste Chef, um, Anne-Marie Bonneau. Um, all right. And then what else? We uh, we can also, you know, we can also try to create, you know, uh, some more uh, some more living things. Uh, growing things is a great way. I mean, if you have kids, growing things is an amazing way that you can uh, that you can learn for yourself, for your kids. Uh, so anything you can grow, even if you have a balcony, just a balcony, you don't necessarily have to have a garden. And of course, composting. Composting is wonderful because you give back to the earth. You truly give back to the earth. And I, since I composted, started composting, I'm, I'm not, I'm, and I don't know, I don't think there's anything in the whole plastic reduction that I have loved as much as the composting because um, right now I don't have a special, you know, I don't dirt the, the, the waste that I, that I have. I will wash out anything that I have, that, that any occasional plastic or aluminum or anything that I will have, I will wash it out and I will recycle it. And I know that the chances that it actually does get recycled are much larger, but I also have that harmony with the earth because I'm giving back to it. And then I put that earth back onto my plants and in my garden and that's a great symbiosis. I think that many people, when when you put your hands into nature, you 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 reconnect again, and this whole journey becomes a little bit more beautiful. So it's not so much about being negative and feeling like, oh, I can't use this or I can't use that. No, it's more like I can use this or I can use that or I can mend this. So again, back to the first point, mind shift, truly changing the attitude and just being warned about those etiquettes. When you see something that has got a green package 
overgreen, full of leaves, but then you read at the back side that it has like 60 ingredients and most of them you don't even know what that means, stay away from it. It's probably bad and it's probably greenwashing. So just some kind of a, some kind of signal has to be, you know, awakened. Uh, Bio plastic does not degrade in your garden, okay? Here is another example, how I store food, for example. Here's another uh, partner of ours. It's a Belgian girl that does these for restaurants. They are actually fabulous. Uh, I, I have several one of these in my fridge. So I buy cheese at the uh, cheese shop because, you know, I used to live in France and getting cheese from a cheese shop was just completely normal. But since I moved here and if I went to a large surface shop, I only found cheese that was packaged in plastics. Uh, and so I started to go to a specialized cheese shop, which is making it quite expensive for us because we are a family of five with just one income. And in the end, we feel that, you know, we just have that much money that we can spend. So we buy a little bit less cheese than we used to, uh, but it's very good quality. And we ask them to put it in our own containers. Otherwise, what happens is that they give us <clears throat> this. And I wanted to show it to you because I have to actually, if I ever get it like this, my husband sometimes goes out and has a bike and can't bring the, 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 the containers. Uh, so then, you know, he gets it in this. So there is hard paper and hard plastic. And of course I separate it, but I want you to know that this kind of plastic, it's really a no-no. It's, 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 it's just bad. It's not really recycled. So what else can I show you that I have done? Oh, Vicky has bought me this for my birthday. And this is tea, which she simply uh, mixed herself. So she buys loose weight tea and then she mixed this for me and it was just amazing and I love it. I also buy loose weight tea and refill these containers. Actually, it's, I think it's already refilled this one uh, in a loose weight tea shop. And I asked them to put it straight into my containers or I reuse my previous bags to fill them. And um, yeah, this, these guys, everybody knows, everybody probably has these now, but I talked to our maid today and she said, no, I still have plastic brushes. I'm like, so what do you pay for a brush? And she was, she was saying to me like one or two euros. Um, and I said, well, this is one and a half euro, you know? I mean, and then you can just exchange the, the head of it and you can find it in, 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 any, in, any, in any large, actually this one was, this one wasn't, this one was bought in a, some uh, loose weight shop, but, but another one that I have was, which is identical, was bought in Carrefour. So you do find them if you look for them, but your mind has shifted and you no longer take something that is plastic. These are natural fibers as well, so you can just throw it in your compost. I usually use them for, uh, you know, scrubbing my compost bin or something, so they will really last for a whole year. And then there is this, this variation that I found just recently, which has some metal, you see there's like, I don't know if it's copper or some other metal, um, which, you know, you can scrub a little bit harder on. Um, I stopped using cloths which were made of uh, plastic, because most cloths we get, not only are they wrapped in plastic, but they are plastic. And as you can see, when you have an old cloth, unfortunately, I have no example, they kind of fall apart in your hands. So that's because the plastic is getting unstable and it starts to fall apart. So I just use normal cotton cloths and I wash them, uh, you know, at 90 degrees and I, they just get clean and that's it. For household paper, for example, I try not to buy it. We do have household paper, paper for french fries because when we, you know, do french fries, we put them in the paper. However, uh, I really will have one roll for, I don't know, maybe almost a year or so, you know, so I will not use much. Um, I don't use paper. I use uh, tissue napkins when we eat. Um, they're also washable. This is linen. They weren't expensive. And uh, Vicky asked me the other day, how do you do when your kids eat spaghetti? <laughs> well, I just, I, I just do, you know, I just wash it and they're perfectly fine. They're not stained. You just wash them and, uh, and that's it. So this is a good solution. And again, I don't wash them every single day. You know, the kids will have them until they get dirty. Uh, this is another solution from Simonetta Bicyclette. Uh, you just uh, use this instead of, you know, there's like a roll of tissue and you use this uh, instead of um, um, Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I have a bird. The little noise that you hear in the background is covered now, but I have a bird which I love very much and I do my uttermost best not to buy any plastic packaged food for my bird. Um, 
I do go to the loose weight section. Somebody told me that, you know, you never know because loose weight, maybe it's old. Well, I'll take my chances. I buy his food at one of those main shops, Petco or something like that, uh, in loose weight, simply. I, brought, I bring my bag, I buy it, buy it loose weight. He has been very healthy bird, so he has never had a problem. But some people say to me that, oh, you know, you never know. I think that a shop that is responsible will not keep old bird food or a food. For dogs, I do not know because I haven't had a dog for a long time. But when I did have a dog many, many years ago, I used to buy El Canuba, I think the brand was called, and that was in a paper bag. So I used to buy, they were, you know, because I had a Great Dane, so it was a very, very big bag. And, and I used to buy, that was a paper bag, I'm not for sure. So finding an alternative, put, put, post on the, on the group, ask what's the alternative, right? Here again, uh, sharing with each other, not only the tips we have, but asking each other, because there is always some friend or cousin or grandma or uncle that will tell you something that they use and you're like, why didn't I think of this before? So in my kitchen, there is very little plastic, but I do pay a lot of attention. And I show you the last item here. Uh, and then I'll show you some, like for example, ketchup. I know people don't use ketchup anymore, but I have small kids and this is just a normal, you know, Dele's brand, but it comes in a bottle. So I buy it because my kids really want ketchup, but I do not buy ketchup in plastic bottles anymore. Um, and as I told you before, I always keep my bags from the bread and all that. Uh, so that, so that uh, I can reuse it until it dies, like until it literally rips apart. I do want to show you something maybe negative. I don't want to finish with the negative, but I, I will have, I love birthdays and we're making a birthday party for the three of my children because they were not having a birthday party during Corona. Uh, and it's going to be a big Egyptian birthday party and I want to make it 100% plastic free. So I order various elements and I ordered straws. And as you can see, not only were they packaged in individual plastic, but also all of them <laughs> came in a giant bag. This is like the maximum of plastics I have bought for quite a while. And this is only to say that when you buy online, try to ask, I tried, I asked in the comments, does anybody know how this is packaged? But nobody did, so I took my chances and it was obviously a mistake. But if you can, or if you have a supplier, uh, a, a supply shop, which, which you know is going to send it to you package free, they, they do exist. Uh, what's the name of our, our guy there, Kiss Kiss Planet? Kiss Planet, a Belgian shop. You can you can try them. They they don't they are really paying attention to not. And you can write zero zero waste in like a checkbox. So then only those products will appear. Uh, so there are ways of getting supplies that are plastic free. And there's also that going back to making remending. Voila. So guys, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for being here today. And I hope to see you in September. Um, and. Um, in, I will send you an email. I'm not very Spanish. I don't send you a lot of things, but during the summer, we'll have a lot of great campaigns together with a solid uh, cosmetics and solid maintenance product maker from France. So please stay tuned. There's going to be lots of discounts and ideas. And I hope that, you know, we all can get connected and stay, uh, stay in touch until September. And uh, I thank you very much for attending and um, I'll be seeing you after the summer. Then I'm wishing you all a very lovely summer. Think about solid shampoos. Think about buying, bringing your own soap, not using the hotel plastics. And make sure to mention to your hotel manager that you're not happy with the single-use bottle that they provide. Voila, voila. That's it. I hope this was useful. And uh, I thank you so much. And um, I'll see you and we are in touch. Bye-bye, everyone.